hey, the first thing I wanted to show you is that I am not beating the S&P 500 since I started tr tracking my portfolio in on the 1st of January 2020. As you can see, I'm up 24%, but the S&P 500 is up 42%. That's about four years now. So I'm my theory was I was going to do this for about seven years. And if I'm still not beating it after seven years, well, maybe I should just index. But then again, the last, or say the first two or three years of that have been a big learning curve and I'm still learning all the time. So I'm hoping that I can catch this and go way past it with something in my portfolio. And let's dive into what my portfolio looks like to see if there's some big winners in there. Okay, so there has been a few little changes. For example, I've sold my stake in OTCM, OTC Markets. And the reason for that was twofold. One is that I felt that the expected returns based on my valuations going forward were not really what I was looking for. Um, mostly based on the fact that OTC being um, a good company in lots of respects, I don't see it having the, it's got really high like reinvestment rates, but it's not able to deploy much of their cash essentially at these high reinvestment rates. And I just am not confident in the next smaller period. The reason I'm not that confident is because I realized maybe wrongly or rightly, I don't know yet, but I don't really understand the tech that they're using. That's the thing that I kind of realized that like, I just don't quite get how it all works. Okay, the other thing I've been doing is I've been selling calls in my Perosis stock. Uh, I was able to sell these at around about $29, 29 euro a, a share. And I sold quite a substantial amount of my Perosis stake. I don't have much left, so uh, I still got it here, but it's gonna be gone very soon, I'm sure. The other companies that I have, they're all just maintained the same. Uh, I'm not gonna go through every individual company here, but I'm just sort of scrolling through the list. Um, some of the things that have moved quite a lot in the previous quarter. A few things have down, um, Alibaba's down 13%. Uh, the big winners on the way up have been KPG has gone up 25% on the quarter. We've also had uh, goodness growth go up 40%, a little over 40% in the quarter as well. So there's they're, they're my cannabis stocks with glasshouse goodness growth the new stock here that you can see at the bottom brockhouse technologies is something that i did buy in the quarter so that was my only purchase and i bought it at 21.48 it's gone up a little bit but uh, it's early days in all of most of my stocks actually i would argue that most of it's still early days and yeah obviously i've had some uh, pretty nasty losses with redbubble uh, um alibaba redbubble now changed the name to Articore, i think I can't quite remember, but I've changed the name. Anyway, I've got some pretty big losses there, but I've got some good winners. Berkshire Hathaway has been a double for me. Um, Technion, TerraVest, uh, Jigen are all up pretty substantially as well. So overall, uh, yeah, that's how I've got to my 24% over the, um, the four years. Not as good as the S&P 500 though. Now each week I send out an email called Yes Stocks, No Stocks, and in that I track valuations of a handful of different companies. And I have serial acquirers in there, I have the mega cap companies as well. I think it's an interesting way to keep track of uh, valuations for those of you who are busy out there and if you like my style of valuations. So yep, each week, links in the description. So here on the screen is how it all breaks down. Uh, I have quite a lot of smallish holdings, two to 5% range. Going to, I'm going to clean this up a little bit over the next year or two is my plan, but I'm not selling them until I feel like uh, I've got where I think fair value is. And I think uh, I'm happy with all the investments still. I don't, I don't want to actually sell anything. So I'm happy to wait for a few of them, but some of them I'm maybe not quite as happy with as others. And I could probably get, I've got 15 companies here at the moment. I'd love to get that down under 10. Now I was able to invest in all these different countries through Interactive Brokers, which is the broker that I use. There's a link in the description below. You can also take a demo account for a bit of a test drive and see whether you like the platform, but that's how I get access to these countries. And finally here on the screen is how it breaks down in terms of the geographic regions of the world. So we have uh, my biggest piece now is coming out of America with that Snellnet and Berkshire Hathaway, Markel, uh, a few other companies there. So that makes up now 22% and China used to be a bigger piece with the process stake, but now it's down to 14%. Alibaba, obviously stock price has been falling too. Therefore that piece of the pie is getting smaller. And as you can see, the rest is uh, countries from all over the world. I have a lot of geographic diversification that I was not planning on, but this is the way it's worked out. So I think that's kind of cool.
All right, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed.